Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Stevens government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Stevens. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon and welcome to Working for You. I am Les Roy Williams. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's program. Today we are going to be discussing tourism and I have with me officials from the Ministry of Tourism to discuss a particular topic that really of the beautification of our communities and how important that is to our tourism. Tourism of course is our biggest income earner at the moment. The country finished with sugar in 2005. We are no longer a sugar economy. We are a services-based economy, with tourism basically leading the way. It is really the heart, at this present time, of our economy. And we have to preserve it we have to develop it in many ways, you know, the different areas of tourism and so on, which we will hear more about, and how the Ministry of Tourism partners with other stakeholders in building a very strong, a very resilient tourism sector. I have with me from the Ministry of Tourism, Ms. Novelette Morton, who is the Senior Tourism Projects Officer. Miss Morton, welcome to this program. Thank you very much. And I have, is it your first time on this program? No, it isn't. It isn't. You've been here before. I know for a fact that my, my, my next guest, Miss Shailene Welcome, who is a Community Tourism Officer, she has been here before two or three times. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, it is my understanding that the Ministry of Tourism is collaborating with a number of departments and agencies within the public and private sector as well as civil society to organize what is called the 2019 National Best Village Competition. Now, that competition has not been around for quite a number of years. There has been a hiatus with that competition, but you are relaunching it. Miss Morton, I want you to tell the audience what is really the purpose of resurrecting, if I may use that word, resurrecting this national best village competition and what do you hope to achieve by resurrecting this competition? Mr. Williams, as you indicated in your introduction, the, it is a beautification effort. So one of the primary purposes is to beautify our surroundings. We want persons to preserve the environment as we, most persons would have heard by now the St. Kitts just recently received a, a global award from the World Tourism and Travel Council um, in destination stewardship. And this is very much linked to the whole idea of um, environmental preservation. So environmental pre preservation, beautification, as well as bringing all communities closer together. We are aware of 
certain negative social um, activities that have been taking place, in particular crime. And we feel that we can bring our communities closer together, create greater cohesion if we have such a competition. And as you said, tourism is the main bread earner. <coughs> so anything to improve the tourism product is welcome. And so we hope to beautify, preserve our environment, and bring our communities closer together. Okay, so, you know, I suppose we can expand on those goals that you have given for resurrecting the competition on a village level. Now, there are two words inside there, village and national. And my question to Shaylin, of course, we can speak about tourism on a national level. We can speak about tourism. But the community level is where perhaps the greatest impact is felt when it comes to tourism. Can you speak to this? You are the community tourism <laughs> officer. As you know, the communities basically have the richness of tourism, right? Natural, cultural, historical assets are hidden. The communities now become a huge part in this best village competition because most of the, the areas to be factored in are actually within the communities itself. So it's an opportunity for the community groups, the communities, the community groups to be on board to take um, responsibility for these natural um, assets, natural and cultural historical assets. So what they do is we're encouraging them to now regain some sort of community pride, which will then lead to national pride. Because you first have to take care of your immediate surrounding. And when you start taking care of your immediate surrounding, then the love is going to be spreading around the villages. Mm -hmm. Because really and truly sometimes we like to see things being done and then we continue. It the best village competition actually started through our community tourism drive. And then we were so happy to see that step picked up on what it is that we would have started with the beautification process. And they had um, a small competition within the um, department. And that was about choosing specific communities um, per zone for the workers. And they would have created a beautiful hotspot right and most of them used what we would have initiated the um, recycling tires and stuff like that and it started so now we want to continue it with all the communities possibly being involved i like the fact that you mentioned that tourism is something tourism is me tourism, tourism is you tourism, tourism all is all of we if we can put it into mm -hmm. our dialect and while it is that tourism is relatively new, it is a new sector in St. Kitts and Nevis. However, it is a sector that is, it is rapidly growing. And it is a sector that, you know, in just, let us say, 15 years, you know, with the, the push, mm -hmm. has garnered a lot of attention regionally and internationally in terms of the product that we have to offer. Miss Morton spoke about the importance of the environment and how it is important that we, we take care of our environment, our surroundings, mm -hmm. and how St. Kitts and Nevis recently won some prize, I think it was in Spain, Seville, in Seville, Spain, which shows that the work that is being done within the Ministry of Tourism is really getting recognized on a global scale. Now, we speak about national, we speak about communities, you're breaking it down. A lot of the tourism is really urban-based. And the reason for that, I think, is because more hotels and restaurants and amenities are concentrated within the urban areas. And our cruise ship port. And our cruise ship port and so on within the urban areas. Now, 
is the resuscitating of this national best village competition an attempt at such to show that look we just don't want to focus on the urban areas but we want to take tourism into the rural areas miss morton a competition of this nature is all inclusive yes and as you rightly say we want to spread the benefits throughout the communities not just restrict to uh, say the urban areas as one of our main strategies, the Ministry of Tourism's main strategies, is the whole idea of community tourism de development. And it is for that reason that at the end of 2015, we employed Ms. Shalin Welcome as the community tourism officer because we wanted to develop community tourism. We wanted to make sure that the various communities around the island are able to benefit from tourism development. And so that is why we brought her on, because we wanted to, as I said, spread the benefits across the board. Mm -hmm. Now, this competition, when do you plan on having it? When do you plan on launching it? And, and how long will it be spread out? And, and what basically... Um, are the are our criteria for being a part of this competition? What will you be looking for? I can speak about the launch, and I'm sure that Novelet would be able to assist me with some of the criteria, right? The launch, we have a small ceremony that is planned for Friday, 17th of May, which is this Friday, at the Independence Square in Bastia, and it starts from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. At that event, we plan to have it as our official opening of the 2019 Best Village competition. We plan to have live performances by local and cultural artists, as well as infamous. We're gonna have um, local food and drink on sale. We would also have, um, representing the Ministry of Tourism, the Music Fest and Restaurant Week um, committees. They're going to have a booth, and they plan to have lots of giveaways for both events. Music Festival, as we know, is coming up in June, and the Restaurant Week follows closely behind with um, in July, and they'll be featuring the ingredient coconut this year. So we're going to be trying a bit of... Um, items from coconut as well as one or two past ingredients over the past four years we would have had four different ingredients i'm not too sure which two we would actually choose but it's a taste of what is actually to come in june and july we are also hoping to have um other departments or ministries that has that have um, partnered with the Ministry of Tourism to pull off this 2019 um, Best Village competition because, of course, the Ministry couldn't do all of this by um, themselves, and we didn't want to either. It's a national event, and so we wanted to include as many ministries and departments as possible. So what we are planning to do is to provide um, the interested persons with an opportunity to interact with members of the executives. There, they would be able to get um, direct information as to the um, what is included, the categories, the categories, the registration form, the guidelines for the competition, the zones, etc. Before we go to the criteria, we can first discuss the categories. And some of the categories include best clean and green area, best kept neighborhood, best home garden, and that's divided into two categories, vegetable and ornamental, best village shop. We thought it would be, that would add a, an interesting dimension to the whole competition because once ago, the village shops were basically the hub of villages and communities. Everybody went there to socialize, everyone went there to buy their bread and to buy whatever um, snacks, whatever food they required. And so we brought it to bring back the whole idea of a best village shop because that brings a cultural dimension to the whole competition. We also have best sponsored roundabout. And what we said was that we didn't want to penalize businesses for adopting spaces 
right? Because we felt that if they were made a part of the competition, generally speaking, they would be at, have an unfair advantage over other communities. So we didn't want to penalize them, so we're bringing them on board. So the roundabouts that are all sponsored will, will compete against themselves. They won't be competing with the other communities. And then we have a Best Village Grandparent. That's a ministerial award. We have two ministerial awards. The Best Village Grandparent basically pays tribute to somebody who is 65 years and older, who basically nurtured a number of the young people in the communities who provided discipline, who might have provided financial help or counseling. So basically, again, as I mentioned at the outset, you find that our communities seem somewhat to be fragmented, but we want to bring our people closer together. And that too was considered a very important area to honor our older persons. And so that is why we have brought on board the Best Village Grandparent. And finally, the Best Sustainability Program. That's also a ministerial award. And as we would have mentioned, clean and green area, best kept neighborhood, they all contain elements of sustainability. The whole idea of, as I said, preserving our, 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 our environment. But sustainability just doesn't speak to environment alone. It talks about, it talks about cultural, development and preservation and it also speaks to livelihoods the importance of ensuring that our people enjoy a decent quality of life and that they can earn income from various projects and so we included the best sustainability program as another ministerial award mm -hmm. good now the, the the community as you mentioned um there are certain things within the community that can be considered sort of like the nucleus in the community that bring people together, the, the shops. I remember once ago, before now, many years ago, before cell phones and the internet mm -hmm. and all of that sort of a thing, in Molyneux, where I am from, there was one telephone. I remember in those times, you used to have to dial. You know the round oh, yes. um, dial oh, yes. thing, and you dial and that so on. That might have been Shelley. I know about it. I know about it. Very much <laughs> it. And, 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 and people used to go to the, the shop, Freights and Sons shop in Molyneux to make a phone call. It shows how developed we've become. And since that time, I mean, we have grown leaps and bounds in terms of everyone having their own phone. They have had their own phones, and now everyone has their own cell phone. They're taking out those phones now, you know, and having their cell phones and so on. So that point about the, the village shop, you know, is really the hub for a lot of buzz and you know the place for gossip and all of that sort of a thing in the village and, and, and many Caribbean writers I think have written on it. It's a place where people come together and, and socialize and things like that. You know so important. Now you mentioned about bringing communities together. That, that this was one of the goals of the, the competition. What does that have to do with tourism? Well, very much. It has a lot to do with um, tourism. We recently, I think it's about a year, year and a half ago, mm -hmm. we conducted a resident satisfaction survey where we basically surveyed persons to find out what are their thoughts about tourism. Do they think tourism affect, affects them? Do they think that they benefit in any way from tourism? As you just rightly said, tourism is you, tourism is me, tourism is all of us. And so what we hope to achieve is to show persons that you have a stake in the industry. You, have, you are a vital stakeholder in the tourism industry and your role is the preservation of the environment, the maintenance of our culture. Because as I mentioned, it's not just about environmental preservation, it's also about cultural development. And so these are very important elements in tourism development. Now the, the, the social cohesion that you spoke of, 
that can go a very long way in terms of reducing certain antisocial elements within the society. And of course, you know, one of the things that can be of detriment to the tourism sector is basically antisocial behavior and can be a turn off for tourists visiting any country. Tourists like to know that they feel safe when they go to any country. And the safer a country is, I think is the, 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 the more that tourists would want to visit that country. And so the bringing people together, as you, you rightly said, can go a very long way in terms of you know, building communities, reducing antisocial behavior. And so therefore when people hear about St. Kitts and Nevis, they will say, oh, it is a safe place to go. People are friendly, people work together, people are loving. When we go into the communities and so on, we see this harmonious relationship between villagers and that sort of a thing. But it's not just for the tourists. It's for First us. and foremost, it is for us first and foremost. Now, when will the launch take place and where and the date and so on? Where will it take place? The launch you will mentioned. take place at the Independence <coughs> Square on Friday, mm -hmm. 17th May. Um, it should start at 10 a.m. and it goes through until about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So it's a, a, an opportunity for us to engage interested um, groups and participants um, during that um, period. At that point, um, we officially declare the competition open and we will take it through until the ending of May. We allow applications to come in to, um, to us until the ending of May. Registration has already started. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. Is that correct? Yes, it has. And where can people register? Friday is a great opportunity as it's going to be continued in the square and also at some of the various ministries or departments who have partnered with the Ministry of Tourism. We have Department of Community Development, Solid Waste Management and Ministry of Tourism and for the persons who are social media type and would prefer to download the criteria and stuff like that they can actually get that information from our facebook page faces of saint kitts tourism mm -hmm. right? that information is already up mr williams sure, if i may just sure, go back right to ahead. something you mentioned earlier about social cohesion we partnered with solid waste as um, shalene just said solid waste management corporation mm -hmm with respect to zoning, the zoning of communities. We have, they, they have their zones when they do their collections. And so we thought there would be a good help, a great assistance. And so we asked them to help us zone the areas and we reduced the areas into 23 zones. And some of the areas are quite, if I can just give you an Certainly example. Go right ahead. Um, some of them are quite extensive. Let's say zone, zone 13, which is Sandy Point. That includes Borks, the Valley, Mount Idol, Crab Hill, Pump Bay, Fig Tree, Stadium View, La Valley. That gives you an idea of our extension. Let, let's say Zone 2, Ponds Extension, Ponds Industrial Site, Ponds Pasture, Newtown, Manchester Avenue, Brand Street, Pond Road, Independence Square, Rosemary Lane, Fort Street, and Keon Street East. You see, these are quite expansive because... Yes. Right. It does not mean that one community group from one zone will submit an application. If Once you have at least three persons forming a group, you can come together and you can have several persons working in a particular zone. All right, so it doesn't mean that because the areas have been zoned that there should be one entry or one application per zone. As many entries as, many entries as, as possible are welcome. Okay. I was going to state that we actually have three judging points. The first would actually take place in July. The second takes place in September, which is our National Independence Month. And the final would take place during the Ministry of Tourism's Tourism Month events in November. Okay, right. 
who are some of the stakeholders that you would have invited to lend their experience and expertise and so on to the whole organization, organization and planning. of and planning. We have a planning committee and we made it as broad based as possible. As we said, it's a collaborative effort. And so we have Department of Community Development, we have Solid Waste Management Corporation, Parks and Beaches Unit, the Ross University, Mrs. Cheryl Bass is representing Ross University. She's the project coordinator for conservation and environmental sustainability at, at Ross University. We have the St. Christopher National Trust Skills Training Empowerment Program. Yes, they're very, very much a part of the organization. And department. we have the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Environment, critical areas. In fact, Mr. Stuart Versailles, he chairs the judging criteria committee, and he's from the Department of Agriculture. So it's a, it's a broad-based committee, and as you say, we will feed off each other's strengths in an effort to make this week come into fruition. And, and for it to be a success. As you mentioned in your, in your introduction, it's been quite a few years since we've had <laughs> I, I can't tell you, but I know an effort was My. made in 2015 to try to resuscitate the competition, and it didn't come. Okay. <laughs> but we, we are committed to ensuring that 2019 is going to be a year with a difference. Come hell or high have, water. Come hell or high water. Uh -huh. Yes, so um, okay. we are hoping that. No, it definitely would be a success. No, no, what are some of, you know, some criteria that the judges would be looking for? Because sometimes that helps in terms of the person who is entering the competition, yes. and so therefore they can expend more of their energy toward some criteria. Um, mm -hmm. We have formed a judging criteria subcommittee. As I mentioned, Mr. Stuart Versailles is the chair of that committee. And we have not finalized the judging criteria as yet, but I can tell you some of the areas that we have discussed. Things like layout, sanitation, the whole issue of sustainability, plant health. Yeah, those are just some of the areas that I can think of the bat. The, he would be in a better position to give you all the details, but unfortunately he hasn't been able to make it today. Mm -hmm. But yes, those are some of the areas in terms of aesthetics. So it's aesthetics, sanitation, uh, plant health, layout, sustainability those are just some of the, the areas that we will be looking at okay who was your last winner by the way <laughs> you probably can't remember if you can't remember how long they didn't have the competition you probably can't remember how long they you know who, is it, who was the last winner the last I, I winner don't know that you now, all but i remember when i was growing up that mansion actually won the competition back to back many times for a small community that's that's how far back it was i, I remember I'm sure, uh, yeah they were winners after thing, and especially for example you know they did a very good job for example they would have these little <coughs> like a little mini square yes right there in mansion mm -hmm. uh molly has one Kaon has one and a lot of focus a lot of focus seem to have gone on you know manicuring these lawns and white washing the stones and all of that sort of a thing i remember it very well one thing i forgot to mention is the use of indigenous plants things like mm. yellow bell and the heliconia and hibiscus and bougainvillea. We want persons to use a lot of the plants that are grown locally mm -hmm. as opposed to importing different plants to right. actually develop. Are you making a pitch for the young people to get involved in this especially? So we've already started that through our Tourism Education Awareness Program and we have um, for the six schools that we actually um, engage in the program they're actually very hyped about joining in a community group i mean that's what we actually wanted because this year our focus was on sustainability and most of the projects surrounded that as we had a agro-tourism project in the high school and then we had um, a recycling um, project where students were actually supposed to make souvenirs out of plastic Right, whether it was plastic bottle or the plastic itself, uh, which were really, really good. So we're gearing them up for more, you know, tourism mm -hmm. activities and activities that would involve them in the communities itself. And I think sometimes um, community groups would have ideas and they start a project, but it goes back to the same. But a new and innovative idea from a young person might actually take it a step further, you know. 
So um, our community, um, community groups should actually welcome the younger ones as not af sometime after they're actually going to be the ones who would be carrying on what we are trying to reignite here, the best village competition. We don't want to just start it and then after the next two, three years, it drops. I, you know? yes, yes. I, I like that. Uh, what you said, because then that speaks to the sustainability yes, it does. of it. And of course, you know, you said the the, the competition um, lay in abeyance <coughs> for so long. Mm -hmm. And so therefore it means then that somebody or some group within the communities was not keeping that competition alive, mm -hmm. keeping it um, sustainable. So it's not just about the competition. Mm -hmm. What happens after the competition? You no longer water the grass and you no longer prune the flowers and all of that sort of a thing because you only did it because it was a competition and there was something priced to be won. But in terms of the ongoing work in the community, that is more important, yes. even more than just a competition. Because a competition is just for what? A day, a week, whatever it is. But then that ongoing work of keeping the community beautiful um, well looked after the work of the the social cohesion that you mentioned and the community um, harmoniousness um, and all of that you know someone or the communities must ensure mm -hmm. themselves that those things are continued otherwise we cannot speak about sustainability Exactly. It is for that reason that we wrote to the Ministry of Education asking that they put the information, give the information to the schools so mm -hmm. that the, the, the students would be the ones to carry the message to the parents, want to encourage them to be a part of the competition and also for them too, for the students as well, to take their rightful place. So that's a strategy that we've, we've employed to engage the Ministry of Education in the whole thrust towards making this competition a successful one. Right. Additionally, the whole question of sustainability is linked to sponsorship because what we are doing <laughs> is approaching the business community and Shelley can speak uh, more about that because she's on that spon that fundraising committee. Mm -hmm. Which Ms. But Bass. Cheryl Bass okay. from Ross University. But we are planning to engage the business community in terms of providing support in cash and kind, all right? And so we want them to not just to give a monetary prize, but to help to hold the hands of communities that particularly need help. Yes, yes. And so there should be some hand-holding going on. And so mm -hmm. we are trying to bring the various businesses on board in mm -hmm. terms of the, the project as well. Well, some communities are more vulnerable than others. and. What you are speaking about, and from what I hear you um, speaking about, is about healthy competition mm -hmm. among villages. You know what, we, what has crept in to our society is the whole thing of unhealthy competition. And you are now seeing it even in sports, where one village competing against another village and they take it to a ridiculous level where there is basically no good sportsmanship. People become violent on the field, resort to acts of antisocial behavior, and all of that. And that is not healthy com competition among villages. You see? And then you also have, in terms of villages, oh, this person that lives in this community cannot go to another community because they are fighting against each other. This whole thing about turf and all of that sort of thing. So you're introducing this competition. It is something that is basically positive. Yes, sir. You know, it, is not a, it is not a matter of you know, one community in a certain sense trying to outdo the other, but it's to see not who is the ugliest, but which community is the, you know, is the most beautiful in terms of, you know, looking after the environment and so on. So in a certain sense, the competition, as I hear you say, is in really instilling certain values 
within the community. Values that sometimes we have lost. And national pride, very important. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of working together, being unified, putting aside differences, creating greater understanding and tolerance for persons who may be different, who may not think like you, who may not be of the same political persuasion, who may not play on the same football team as you do, who may, who may come from a different area. The whole idea is you put your differences aside and you come together to work towards a national good. Mm -hmm. I know that Jamdown, who is always listening to this program, will be very happy because he's always talking about the cleanliness of the country, beautifying and so on, which is really an attraction for tourists. And I do know that the Solid Waste Management Corporation has had a drive, I think it is still going on, where they have been going into communities and looking for derelict vehicles, vehicles, abandoned vehicles, and removing them, and so on. All of that is part of the whole picture, too, of beautification mm. of the communities. And, re and removing certain health risks, because mosquitoes and all of that mm. sort of a thing, when you don't beautify your community and keep your community clean, they're health hazards as well. Now, you've said that the Department of Agriculture is partnering with, or is part of the planning committee. And you mentioned something about agriculture as well. Could you elaborate a little bit on that, in terms of that being a part of the competition? Well, because they deal with crops, they uh, play a pivotal role in terms of guiding us, you know, That's into good. what to look for. Um, for example, with respect to the judging criteria, and it's for that reason that we ask Mr. Versies to chair that committee because we, they know things about plant health. Um, of course, they would know about sanitation. They would know about the whole idea of sustainability, whether you use insecticides or weedicides as opposed to compost or, or manure or, you know, more friendly to them, that which is more friendly to the environment. They have the particular expertise, and so we thought it, the Agriculture Department would play a pivotal role. Additionally, we have partnered with them on their programs. Just, uh, was it last week or this week? This week, yes, we were on the AgriScope and Agriculture in Context mm -hmm, programs mm -hmm. because we're trying to gain as much publicity as possible, as much promotion of the competition because we really want wider participation. We want as many persons, as many groups, as many communities as possible to come forward to participate in this competition. Mm -hmm. And so we are um, employing various means to do so. And the Agriculture Department willingly assisted us in terms of appearing on their programs, on their um, AgriScope and Agriculture in Context programs. Okay. Now, of course, at the end of every competition, People look forward to something. They look forward to a prize. They look forward to a token. They look forward to, you know, something given to them for their hard work and dedication and all of that. Now, do you want to reveal what some of the attractive prizes would be? This entire project is actually donated funds. It's going to be running on donated funds. And the Ministry of Tourism basically um, has started that funding process with giving $20,000 to begin with, right? And uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to raise somewhat around 200, 200 to $250,000. Because we do consider the fact that some of these community groups may not be um, social community groups that would use the... Um, we call it tools, garden tools on a regular basis. But we may have uh, community groups that are church involved, sport involved. And you know that it, that requires mm -hmm. uniforms and stuff like that for them to be able to participate in specific games. So we're trying as much as possible to have um, prizes that are garden based as well as monetary prizes. So um, we've now just started our um, 
sponsorship engagement and we actually have a tier for um we have platinum we're looking for sponsors to sponsor within the platinum um category of twenty five thousand dollars we have gold for fifteen thousand silver for ten thousand bronze for five thousand partner for 2005 and we're also looking for persons to just be regular contributors um maybe less than 2005 maybe 500 maybe 100 anything that goes towards the the development of this competition right because it's actually whatever is left will actually go on to the other Right. So you want to, of course, offer attractive prices of and so on, but you want to attract for some money in order to get these prices well, we have and get sponsors. And that's what yes. I mean, yes. to get sponsors. Yes. And we're thinking of things like staycations and dinners and tours <coughs> and things like that which mm -hmm. are tourism related right. so they can actually experience the product mm -hmm. because I think we need to develop an appreciation from amongst ourselves. We need to know the product in order to be able to promote it. And so this is an opportunity for persons to come forward and to win attractive prizes. See, it's mm. attractive things. <laughs> <laughs> you have a category here called village grandparent. I want to hear more about that. What sure. does that category involve? So village grandparent. <laughs> the village grandparent is paying tribute to our elder persons. You know, the Department of Social Services and Community Development they have a they all they usually organize um, a month of older persons. Yes, a month of older persons. Uh, well, we we want to ensure that our older persons who help to bring to keep the communities together oh. are honored. And so we are looking at things like persons who offer advice to community members, particularly the youth, who, who were or still are disciplinarians, who are respected and admired by the community, who have helped over the years to preserve culture and customs. And I'm, I'm sure we can think of persons in various communities who have made uh, an indelible contribution towards um, cultural and community development. Um, helps to provide the basic needs of youth in the area and of course as I mentioned the person should be at least 65 years old oh and we've included for those I don't know how much weighting we would give actually give this um, indicator but we're thinking of the number of Facebook likes um, the, the only concern is that that was expressed was that you might have persons who are outside a particular community who might be liking a particular person who might oh. be nominated. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to fine tune the criteria for that. Right, category. because it's, it's, it because it's community based. Right. Yes. It's the people who live within the community. It should be the community that should, should be, be liking. Yes, right. nominating. Them. But because there's no way of, yeah. yes. no way of, of differentiating. Who is liking or who is not? You can't. You can't, right. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have to refine the indicators for that particular mm -hmm. category. So there's also a best sustainable sustainability program also. What are you looking for in that one? As I mentioned, most of these categories relate to preserving yes, the yes. environment. So mm -hmm. the clean and green area is very important. But we're also looking at a repurposing project, for example, using plastic bottles or plastic bags or old tires to create art and craft for the benefit of the community. So some kind of recyclables project, we're thinking. Um, Why are you talking idea. about tires and we hear the, the Ministry of Health saying how to get the rid of the tires then? The tyres are breeding mosquitoes. Not if the persons are actually filling them with dirt and planting inside of it, okay. right? As I mentioned before, the STEP program would have initiated a competition. And going around the island, I have been seeing a lot of these tyres being used where they've been planting beautiful inside yes, of them. Of course, they painted them up and it gives such an attractive view when you are passing on the sides of the community. So if you properly then it would it would not create um, sometimes health. what I, w I have seen is that you have a plant mm -hmm. and basically the the, the, the the old tire encircles the plant yes. nobody is planting in it 
so then that becomes really you know an attraction for these mosquitoes that give in all these kind of chicken gunya and 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 so on you see what i'm saying on one hand you're speaking about something different but mm -hmm. i have seen people using tires to just be around the plant is growing inside and the tire is around it but so it's a sort of sort of a protection yeah. of the plant this is where well, the Department of Agriculture and Department highlight, of Environment, yes, yes could work with, uh, work together on, mm -hmm. uh, provide advice to communities, because as I mentioned, this is just one, this is just one example of uh, uh, an effort to promote the competition. Right. We can have um, environmental education as part of the whole process in, involved in the competition by having the Department of Environment and Agriculture going to the various communities to let people know. Um, I should mention as well that as part of the outreach, um, we have partnered with the Department of Community Development. They have a number of community development officers who on a regular basis go into communities and provide advice, um, however, try to, to, to um, develop projects that would benefit the specific communities. And what we did was to ask them to when they do their walkthroughs, that they talk about the competition. So we gave them um, a package, we gave them packages, so that they could actually disseminate when they're doing their walkthroughs of the communities. So they to play a critical role in terms of advising people on things like sanitation and cleanliness. Okay, now how much, how much time would you give to the participants in this competition to, you know, start their project, and from start to completion of their project. I mean, because you must have a, a period when you say, well, this is when the competition actually begins, and this is when it ends, and um, you know, this is the time when we're going to have the judging, or are we going to have pre-judging, and things like that. We're not gonna penalize groups that would have already started um, community projects. What we do ask is that the group presents a photo of the project that they would have started already. And there must be a difference um, leading up to the judging um, point um, in the project. We have, because we have a few community groups who would have started projects before. You know the beautifier specific area, but there must be something in that project that is different. Right. So we, mm -hmm. um, I think some would have started and some would take on new projects. So yes, yeah, so there, there must be before and after photos. Sure. All right, mm -hmm. before you actually start the project, what the, the, the project look like, and after, again, you must see the marked change. Mm -hmm. They also have to, are required to, to give a brief rationale or explanation of why they have chosen a particular project. They will be required to answer the following questions. What challenges did you encounter in carrying out the project? What did you do to overcome these challenges? And what advice would you share with communities to sustain a beautiful spot? Because as I keep mentioning the whole idea of sustainability, we're not just doing the competition for 2019 and it stops and then we have another 10 years elapsed yeah. before another competition. We want it to be a continuous project. And so that is why we have ask them to give like a brief explanation. So when they submit for judging, they, they, besides just mm. the photos, they will have a brief paragraph or whatever explaining how sure. they went about the project. Sure. Mm. So in that paragraph, they would explain their rationale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And probably to give some sort of a description in terms of, you know, this is where we were this is where we have come, you know? And of course, the photo that you spoke about to accompany that rationale, you know, um, description, you know, of the, the area that has been worked on um, and so on. Of, of course, you would have a final judging of the, the competition. So you will have the pre-judging and then you will have a final judging. Now, when do you hope to have this final judging done? The final judging should actually take place in November. 
which is in, which is also in the tourism month activities. I'm not too I'm not too um, sure as you know what the judging entails as I don't sit on the um, judges um, committee, but I do know that it would take place. The um, I think it should be the ending of November. Mm -hmm. right. So who would comprise your judges? I suppose you have to be taken from a wide cross section yes, of um, the society and so on. And I was also thinking, even in terms of a guest judge, so that you can have maybe a tourist or so on being on the panel of judges, you know, at, you know, to, to have a look as, as well as the, at the communities and so on, because they're the one, too, who are you know, yes. seeing mm -hmm. the communities and they have their own opinions and what looks good and what doesn't look good and that sort of a thing. That is my view. Oh, that's a good idea. It's a very <laughs> good idea. Um, November is far away and mm -hmm. um, the judging criteria don't, I, committee, I don't think, have, you know... It has, has not been formed yet. It has, has not really gone into all that detail. But what we do know is that the judges would have to have technical knowledge, so you'll need to have persons who know about a horticulturalist or agriculturalist or whatever who actually know environmentalists about the environment but you, I also think it'd be important to have the lay person who as you say as well as well as the tourists who can just say you know this is what I think you know this, <laughs> this is how I see it you know and so you need to have that balanced mm -hmm. and approach the judge so, off. <laughs> right so we said beauty is in the eye of the beholder, in the eye, eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay we are going to go to the phone lines we are going to open the lines and we are going to take some questions i know that some of you are listening out there and you too those of you who are listening can offer your own suggestions ideas in terms of what you think that this national best village competition should be like i know sometimes we can take oftentimes a, a top-down approach rather than a bottom up approach in dealing with a number of things. So we want to hear from you in terms of what you think the National Best Village competition should entail. We have outlined quite a bit and I know that there's a lot that you agree with, but if there's anything that you wish to add, you can do so. The numbers to call, the local number is 465-2555. That's the local number. And the overseas number, the international number, is one seven one eight five seven seven two nine one six. Someone is already on the line. Working for you. Good afternoon. I would like to suggest that you that they um, try to encourage planting of trees. We've lost a lot of trees around the island, and especially flowering trees. You know, oleanders and things on the side of the road as you drive along. We're getting a lot of bush and dry stuff now because we no longer have the cane fields. So I think we need to have a lot of that along the sides of the roads. And as I think could be encouraged for the sustainability part of it, you know. Hello? Are you yes, listening? yes, we, Can you we're, hear me? We're, we're listening to you. Key okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I think it is in Molyneux. They have a whole lane of um, yellow bells, if I remember rightly, and that's so pretty along the sides of the roads. So if each each village could concentrate on particularly nice fall flowering trees, you know, it, it would make a big difference to the beauty of the island, I think. And another thing, if, if the coconut is, <coughs> is, the, is the thing for this year, I think we need a lot more coconut trees too. Because I understand even the fellows that sell coconut water bring them in from other islands and... It's really ridiculous to think that they have to do that. We should have enough coconut trees here in St. Kitts. So all of that could be encouraged to perhaps. Okay? Okay, thank you so much for your, your suggestions. Thank you. Not that you seem eager to answer. <laughs> Well, I certainly welcome those very good suggestions. Miss Ward, you're very much on the ball. Yes, I, I, we agree with you that um, we need to have more planting of trees. And I... Some uh, a few of us have been able to benefit from this is a little aside, but a few of us have been able to benefit from going to Morocco, and the first thing that struck me when I went to Morocco was the number of trees everywhere you turn on boulevards, 
boulevards are everywhere. And I think this is something that we can do here. We need to have a lot more trees that are planted. Mm -hmm. Also, the whole idea of coconuts, there was a challenge um, being experienced the by the country. There was a particular disease that, w that was wiping out the coconuts. And even when they tried replanting, I think there was some issue it, again. It was not adaptable to the region. So I, 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 they, they, I they seem to have the, the trees seem to have been losing the tops, right? Isn't that how it, yeah? Yes, so I know there was some effort made to replant coconut trees, but as I said, there was a challenge. So, but this is something, yes, that I think that we need to do because, as you say, with restaurant week, we choose these themed ingredients. One year we had yam, and we had to bring in yam from St. Vincent. Um, coconuts, I have to bring coconuts from Dominica, etc. So I will, and you know, where Dominica had the hurricane, etc. So it's a challenge where the particular ingredients are concerned. So, yes, we do need replanting of trees. That's good, the beautification and so on. I was also thinking maybe sometimes at Christmas time, if the villages can have a lighting competition. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You know, because lights. You know, they look Makes very nice and beautiful. so on in the night. And this can encourage, you know, the whole lights of Christmas and, you know, people doing different um, creative things with lights and so on. So for people out there who are probably listening and, and so on and want to take on that idea of a Christmas lighting competition in the villages, once that might be an interesting thing too. Once we can have a small electrical bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, I get you. Now you're, you're bringing other factors now. There are other factors that might prevent such a thing from happening, no? I think so. Right, yeah. which it has to do with... The electrical bills. The electrical bills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get you. That's quite interesting. Working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Regarding the um, best grandparent, does the person have to be the a biological grandparent or could the person simply be of grandparent age but who is very valuable in the village okay thank you miss okay thank you very much yes the person doesn't have to be a grandparent the the main criteria is that the person must be at least community. 65 years old and must have community spirit must have demonstrated that they're disciplinarians that they have the genuine interest of the community at heart, that they have helped to nurture a number of young people, right, and provided whatever counseling or financial assistance to persons in the community. Those, those but why you start at 65? That's, that's a lot. 65, 65. 65, is, 65 is young. 65 is young? Yes. Yeah. It is really young, yeah. <laughs> 65 is young. We should make it the person older, maybe like seven, should, 70 or so? No, no, no. I think you should make it a little bit younger. At 50? Oh, no, that's 50 too young. That's Especially given the, the kind of thing we have in society today. You are still thinking of the past where grandparents are 65. Nowadays, you have grandparents who are 30-something years old. Then remember, she just said that it doesn't have to be a grandparent, grandparent. I know. Mm. I'm just being a bit... Devil's advocate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, some of your sponsors, of course, were TDC and Horsford, two of the biggest companies, basically, here in St. Kitts and Nevis, who are supporting the this, initiative. This, this, this worthwhile um, initiative, and it's a good thing. Now, would you like to make a pitch to invite more companies and more businesses to support this initiative? I think you said something before about money and so on. Sometimes you have to call the names, you know, but we won't call the names here. See, this is an opportunity for all of our, our companies to actually try and be a bit more involved with our communities, community activities. We have to have more private sector, public community sector engagement. engagement and partnerships. That is where we want to go. Of course, the Ministry of Tourism is a public sector, TDC and Horsford, they're private sector. Mm -hmm. And so to come together to, you know, support these kind of community initiatives is really a win-win situation. Yes, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. You start the help now, 
when they would have started. As we said, that we want to ensure that the projects that they would have started are sustainable so that they don't rely solely on a specific ministry or department to continue it for them. But they would feel so proud of the development of their project that they take ownership and they actually want to continue. So in doing that, they would have gotten a startup kit from us that we would have purchased from TDC or Hosford or Builders Paradise. And to maintain that, they go out and they get more supplies from these very same companies, right? Yes. So the sponsorship from these businesses starts small, but it gets bigger as these communities keep going back. Right. Supplies. Because I might need some paint. Exactly. I might need, you know, a few paint brushes. I might need some some garden tools, mm -hmm. you know, to dig and all of that sort of a thing. So you don't want to have some groups that are handicapped because really and truly I want this group wants to participate mm -hmm. in the competition but do not have the wherewithal. To do so. I think that's where the sponsorship comes in because to begin with we're trying as much as possible to get each registered group a package to start. So part of this would be sponsored novelette by some of the um some of these businesses. So it's in small packages, right? But it expands after. The winners would actually be getting um prizes from some of these business places, but in the end they actually go out to get more to maintain these projects. Nobody? I, I just wanted to say that we're looking at the possibility of businesses actually adopting communities and providing necessary guidance, financial help, you know, actually physical help, etc. that is required to be able to compete in the competition. Right. The partnership is, is goes much deeper than just computing cash or kind it actually giving support sure. and encouragement and sure. assistance. Right, so it is really and truly these businesses, entrepreneurs, whether they're big businesses or small businesses or medium businesses, it's the whole idea of giving back to the community. Because we are talking community. Mm -hmm. It's the whole idea of one's contribution to their community helping their community to move forward. And one of the ways of doing that is of course, as you correctly said, the pride that you have in your community. Because if I have pride in my community, let's face it, I will want to see my community clean. I will not go, nowadays you have a lot of elements in communities, people defacing buildings and, and property, and we have all of that sort of a thing going on as well, which is not good in communities. I remember some years ago there was some noise about, you know, in one community, something that was seen as a historic piece of thing was painted. People took it and was, you know, playing politics and so with it. You know, the red and the yellow and the orange and so that we love to parade around and so in. And people were talking about, do you know that this is a, a historic thing? You know, this is a treasure. Why do you take it and do that to it? Mm -hmm. You know? So, it's about really, as you correctly said, our culture. How do we preserve our culture? And this is one of the ways in which we preserve our culture. By really taking care and owning what we have taking care of it in the community. Nowadays you are seeing a lot of people, graffiti, people writing up all kind of things, all kind of profanities, and all kind of things on walls and so on in communities. And these really send a very wrong message and can send a very wrong message to our visitors as well, the kind of profanities and all kind of things people writing up. Sometimes I see them and really and truly, you know, I don't want to laugh, but sometimes I laugh. But it's not because it's funny. 
I don't really find it funny that people are doing that. That is not beautifying your community by spraying up all kind of things and writing up all kind of things on, on the wall and defacing buildings and so on. That is out of order. I think Mr. Williams, um, the Ministry of Tourism, under its initiative for the um, Tourism Education Awareness Program, it not only caters for the school children, but also for um, residents, adults. Like we've had the um, a community tourism workshop that was held just in April, and that is one of the things that we did. We basically had a train the trainer workshop, where we chose executive members of some of specific groups who would, in return, be, they would be trained, and in return they would take the training back to their community groups. Because what we're trying to do is to reinstill the values of our historical and cultural assets. Right? And as you said, uh, we don't want for persons to be defacing um, our cultural richness. When we travel to other places, we love the fact that mm -hmm. they would actually um, take so much pride in procuring their cultural and, and historical monuments. And we, I think it's probably because of the fact that we're not too educated on, on that. So that's where the Tourism Education Awareness Program comes into play. And we not only do it by ourselves, we partner again with um, private sectors and also with other public sectors that like we have community development that we partner with and public works and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we, we've already started that process and we're hoping that within this whole best village competition that some of that would be shared as well from various um, ministries and departments as um, they engage specific community groups um, hopefully on Friday and onwards mm. right. I noticed that you have the Ross University School of Veterinary Sciences on board what is their input into this competition. Mrs. Cheryl Bass, she's the project coordinator for conservation and environmental sustainability. So you can see the link immediately. Mm. And we invited them. Being aware of this, we thought it was ideal to move beyond the public sector and to engage the private sector in terms of being a partner with us on the project. And she's chairing the fundraising committee. So she has proposed a number of um, approaches, as was mentioned mm. by um, Ms. Welcome by Charlene, uh, the different the tiered approach in terms of accessing funds in cash and in kind. So she's played a pivotal role in that area, and she will be continuing to meet and to engage with the private sector to get it to come on board to support the initiative. Right. We said that the final judging of the competition will be in 2019. Before that, you're going to have intervals um, where you would have some sort of a prejudging. The first in July and the second is in September. In September. Okay. okay. So July and September. Yes, we're going to have the, the first November in July you have the final. So mm -hmm. Ju July and then we have one in September, which is um, Independence Month for us. Uh, you know, we're going to have some independence activities going on, right, on right, as well. Right. And then we have the final in November. So, so there is an elimination process? An elimination, but basically what we are trying to do is to ensure that persons don't wait until the last minute to just put on some whitewash on some stones and figure that's it. <laughs> we, want it we want a more sustainable approach. So we want persons to start from May to prepare for November, not to wait until September to figure that they're going to just try and do something cosmetic for the, the competition in I November. Mm. So that's why we have different judging points, not to eliminate anybody because we're encouraging as wide participation as possible. So we don't want to eliminate any... any so any no one will community. be eliminated nobody, who nobody enters the competition? No, it's only at the end that we have the judging, the final judging. So, so you're going to have what? First, second and third? How that go? Or you're simply going to be judging according to categories? You're going to have an overall winner. That for sure. <laughs> you're going sure. to have second place. Mm -hmm. I think. And you're going to have category winners. Yes. Because you have the categories here. Yes. So yes. you're going to have a winner. The categories that you mentioned. Best clean and green. So someone will win in that category. Mm -hmm. And then you have best kept neighborhood. 
another winner in that category. Mm-hmm. Best Home Garden Vegetable, another in that category. Best Home Garden Ornamental, another in that category. Best Village Shop, another winner there. Best Sponsored Roundabout, another winner and best village grandparents. So you'll have winners in all of these categories. And then you will have an overall winner. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where the best sustainability program comes in, I think. The the best sustainability program. So that will be the award that the ministry will give. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they will give the award for the best village grandparent too. Yes, it's done. Yeah, I'm excluded from that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that you would like to to say about this national best village competition that you have revived after so many years of it being dormant? Well, just to say that we want um, all the communities to come on board. Um, People should get together and discuss ideas and come forward. The registration forms, as Shalina indicated, are available at Solid Waste Management Corporation, the Ministry of Social Services and Community Development, and the Ministry of Tourism. So come on board, and then Shalina will talk about the launch, which is on Friday. Yes, so we are encouraging as many community groups as possible to actually take an advantage in um, engaging with the executive members, various ministries or departments at um, the launch, which will be held at the Independence Square this Friday. We would prefer the groups being able to get as much information as possible. Like there would probably be some groups who would have um, some waste disposal issues within their communities. And so solid waste would be right there to answer all those questions, Mm -hmm. how they would play a part in the whole competition, how they would assist groups. Because I know sometimes front of the communities are beautiful but when you go to the back of the communities <laughs> now that's another thing that and has I, always I, been I think issue. these are some of the things that would be considered when they're actually judging the communities because they're not just going to be looking at the front they're going to be looking at the front and the middle and at the back right especially so it's, within, it's, com- you know, it's those, comprehensive yes you know within those um engine rails areas where persons actually just take their old refrigerator and throw it over and the old stoves and beds and they throw it over but solid waste would be there to provide um, information as to how they can play a role in assisting these community groups it's an opportunity for um, communities to actually get rid of a lot of waste that they have that would be hidden it's going to be um, not only a uh, more beautiful environment but also a more healthy environment for all of us mm-hmm. right? Right. so come on out on friday we promise that we're gonna have um a lot of fun we're gonna it's gonna be exciting we're gonna have um performances by infamous he is actually working on a nice um jingle there for us and he has promised that he is going to give us the best that creativity has to offer so we are definitely going to be holding him to it we haven't heard it as yet but we know that it's going to be good so um that's one aspect of it we're going to have local food and drinks um on sale and we're going to have a live dj there uh dj wet dot i think he's a, a popular dj um, we're going to have um, a bit more, or not too sure exactly what, but as I mentioned before, we're going to have some giveaways from Music Fest, which um, Music Festival comes up in June, and also um, Restaurant, Restaurant Week. Week. Yes, I forgot. We're going to be giving um, not only um, giveaways for Restaurant <coughs> Week, but we're also going to have persons tasting a few dish from some of the main local ingredients that we would have, have had over the past five years. Okay. What right. time is the launch? I the launch is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. Right. So. And if persons are that interested and, and they want that much information, we're going to start until 5 or 6. Wow. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, I am so impressed with what you have said today. The very fact that you are reviving this national best village competition 
which is a very positive thing for our communities to come together to take pride in what is yours to protect your culture to preserve your environment and to bring the community together in this competition you are touching on so many so many facets of what you know communities should actually be because a country is made up of communities let's face it we can speak about the national level but you know, when you really break it down we are in communities and one community has to relate to another community we are all interconnected in some way so i applaud you for resurrecting this national best village competition and wish you all the best thank you, going thank you. forward with the competition yeah. we are out of time and if you have nothing else to say i will have the final say <laughs> just to say okay. thank you okay i want to thank miss novelet morton who is our senior tourism projects officer at the ministry of tourism and miss shailene welcome who is community tourism officer at the ministry of tourism thank you to both of you for coming on today's program and sharing with us of course they were talking about the resuscitation of the 2019 national best village competition in st kitts and that the ministry has recognized the need, the Ministry of Tourism that is, to create partnerships for the effective implementation of the competition. And of course is partnering with a number of stakeholders to bring this competition to fruition. And as was said in a nutshell by the Senior Tourism Projects Officer, the competition is designed to beautify our surroundings, preserve our environment, and bring our communities closer together. Thank you very much for listening and to today's program, wherever you are. We appreciate your company from week to week. Thank you as well to our callers who offered their ideas, their opinions, their suggestions. You are very welcome to do so from week to week. I am Les Roy Williams. Next week, we will be back with another edition of Working For You. Until then, have a good time. For you, a weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful twin island federation working for you is weekly every wednesday live from 1 30 p.m to 3 p.m on set i said radio with fm and sugar city fm with rebroadcast on participating stations working for you